Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal is make your own focus chart. All right, as a prerequisite, go watch my how to use a pen tool, then get back over here. You can do this two ways. Uh, you can just draw random shapes and that'll be great. But you, if you've got access to something like this um, as an image file, and you can import that in, put it on its own layer, and then trace over top of it. Let's go have a look. So I already brought that in on, on a, as its own image. And if you double click on an image, you can dim it, which I'm dimming to, to 20% and locking the image so I don't accidentally uh, mess around with it. Add another layer and then I'm drawing on the new layer. I'm going to draw these larger shapes in here, sometimes called trumpets, but because they're on an angle, it makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass. So I'm going to actually unlock my bottom layer, double click on the rotate tool and rotate this 45 degrees so that I'm drawing them vertical. Now I'll go back and lock it, select my top layer. Now the first thing I need to do is to draw this outside line shape here. And it's not that difficult. Grab the pen tool. I'm going to imagine in space, because I'm going to trim this, so I'm going to go a little bit further of where this is, and click about here and drag in. Go to the middle, click and drag up, and then go down to the bottom, and click once here. Now by default it's set to black. I'm going to convert this to um, a very bright green. So there we go, very bright green. And in my stroke size I'll make this a quarter point just so it's easier to mess around with. Now I'm grabbing the white arrow, the direct selection tool arrow. There's two of them. And if you click on these, you'll actually see the handles that you drew and you can move them around and be a little bit more accurate. There we go. So there's my first one right there. It's following the outside edge pretty good. Maybe that one can come in a little bit. So I'm selecting it and moving it inwards. All right. So because this shape is, is actually symmetrical on both sides, I'm going to grab the move tool and select that. And then inside the uh, rotate tool, if you click and drag and pop this up, we're probably going to need this uh, a few times. So I will grab this and double click on this, to, whoops, sorry, select it once and then option click in the middle of where I want this shape to be. So option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, click, and it's set to reflect on the vertical access preview copy. So I'm making a copy, copy, there it is. I'll shut off the bottom and you can see we've got two shapes and we actually need to create interim shapes in here. We need to create, if you just count the lines, we need to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines between these two. Not a problem. I'll select this and in my object, blend, blend options. Instead of smooth color, which is the default, we set it to eight steps. So now it's eight steps. This is the blend tool. We click on the blend tool. We click over here. We click over there and click over there. And there we go. And if we turn on the bottom, we now have eight symmetrical step steps. If they don't absolutely uh, match in here, remember we're not making a scientific drawing. If I wanted to, be, I'm trying to do this quickly, but if I wanted to be absolutely accurate, I could do to three decimal points, uh, but I don't care about that. Now this is a virtual blend, so it doesn't really exist. To make it exist, go to Object, Expand, OK. Now it's a real bunch of shapes, but they're not filled shapes. How do I fill the shapes? The easiest way to do this is go back and grab this tool here. That's the Direct Select tool and drag select and I'm selecting those two points and holding the control key on Windows, command on Mac, and J for join. Command control, J, join, join, join. Let's go down to the bottom. Do the exact same thing. Join. Make sure you've got the right ones. Join, join. Select them change them from a green stroke 
to a black fill, we've made our trumpets. Is it that hard? No, not at all. Now, if we turn on the background again, we'll, we'll notice that we have to rotate those around. So if I select them all, let's double click on here and we'll make sure copy is set 270 degrees, pops it over to there, copy, now it's copied. And this is a separate element, so if I grab my move tool, I could move this around in here. Next, we need to chop this so it falls within that area. To do that, I'll select all, including the background, and double click on my rotate. And now I'm going to choose minus 45 degrees, not copy, and lock the bot background. So I just temporarily moved everything 45 degrees, drew something, and then went back, just because it's easier for those offset trumpets. Now, I'll show you an easy way to create that uh, outside shape. I'm going to start not with a rounded rectangle, but with a rectangle. And let me zoom in a little bit to make this a bit easier now that I've uh, drawn these correctly. Okay, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And as I start to draw, if I'm not perfectly where I want, keep your finger on the mouse and hit the space bar and you can move the position. I'll drag this to the outside edge of where I want that, let go, make sure I can see the, the bottom. So I want to turn that the fill off. And if you click on the inside of that rectangle, you can actually drag that shape in right now. Woo, there we go. Next up, I'm going to use that to trim, and that's the Pathfinder. If Pathfinder isn't up, go to the Window menu and choose Pathfinder. Uh, select, even though we have no fill or stroke on this outside shape, select all, and then click on this little button, trim, hello, wow. If I didn't have to stop and explain that, I've got these shapes drawn in no time. All right, let's do this over here. Same idea. I'm going to grab the pen tool, click in the middle, and just draw one of these shapes, and I'm going to draw them very far out click over top and lock that in. And this time I'm going to fill that with black and I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, uh, 11. So how do, what's the math for that? Uh, actually, Illustrator has the math. So I have this selected, double click on, or sorry, don't double click on the rotate tool this time. Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, select the rotate tool and option alt click on that point right there now we'll be rotating from that point and you can type in 360 degrees divided by 12 and when i tab out of there that's 30 degrees click copy now hit command d on the mac control d on windows and we've just made a whole bunch of duplicates remember how we made our um, rectangle before we create that rectangle shape we draw that over here on the outside of the shape. Then we grab the inside, make sure we can see it so we get rid of the fill and stroke. Drag that inside shape like that. Get the move tool so we can select all of the shapes, not our trumpets that we drew over there before. Go to Pathfinder and trim this up. And then we start to move these around. So I would group that together. I'm holding Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, drag it over there. Option, Alt, drag over here. And now get the E key for scale and scale that position over there. Put it back over there. Hold the Option key of the Move tool. Option, Alt, drag over there. I think you get the idea. Before you know it, you've got something like this drawn out. Print that sucker up. Put it on a piece of eight and a half or tabloid or larger sheet. Go to the buck store. Get some foam core. Get some glue. Put this together. You got yourself a nice, quick, and cool focus chart to help you get nice, super sharp images. All right. Whew. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to Video Revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.